It's time for another Lamar Aismo video. Here we go. It looks like my um, suspicion when it comes to Putin and Russia has been confirmed. Uh, last night, the Israelis actually are responsible for the downing of a Russian, I believe it was a reconnaissance uh, aircraft, and uh, 14 or so Russian uh, aviators or the flight crew. Uh, perhaps all of them aren't pilots, but 14 Russian Air Force personnel are dead and they lost that uh, piece of equipment that would have been in use in Syria until 2020. So Israel has caused the downing of this Russian aircraft and, and, and initially the um, Russians blamed Israel totally, but they, they came along later and said, well, it was a case of friendly fire. The Syrian air defense actually shot it down, which, you know, uh, that may or may not be true. But what we do know from this incident is that Israel, like, like the United States, Russia is under the thumb of um, the, the same Jewish supremacists who actually control the um, U United States government. Uh, it, it, it should be clear to everyone now because what Putin has done is essentially uh, bow down and kiss Netanyahu's ring. And RT actually said that, um, you know, uh, there, there was a, um, an agreement between um, Israel and Russia over their um, activity or their actions within Syria. And again, and I've said this on this channel so many times, it's, it's, it's redundant for my, my um, longtime viewers and subscribers but um if you're Russia and you're if you're an al if you're Russia and you're an ally of Syria and you need Assad to stay in place because you want your only uh, warm water port you want your Mediterranean uh, military facility to remain intact so that you have access to these warm water ports and you're able to project some power uh, uh, better with within your neighborhood and it's it's not um you know, and you really are at odds with NATO and these other entities, you would do little to no cooperation with Israel. If you were Russia and you were sincere about defending Assad or protecting your own sovereignty on the world stage or increasing your power at the expense of your adversaries, you wouldn't go along with Israel because no matter how you slice it, because even, even some of the... Um, the, the, the mainstream media, what it does is essentially label Israel an ally, an important strategic and democratic ally in that region. So reason would dictate if you're at odds with the United States and the United States is constantly undermining your positions, not only around the world, but even on your own border, the United States is like wreaking havoc and um, making it so you have to uh, harden uh, your defenses in areas like in the Baltic states where you shouldn't have to worry about anything. There should be a um, a mutual uh, peace agreement between you and the Baltic so they, do, they don't arm and allow your adversary to set up shop there. But apparently Russia's really not sincere and I've been saying Putin's not. And, and, and you know, I'm, I, I used to leave Putin the benefit of the doubt that he's actually playing 4D chess because a lot of a lot of people who support Trump thinks he's actually smart enough to play a uh, 4D chess, um, and and you all know my position on that. I don't think Trump's smart enough to play tic tac toe. Uh, so there's there's no way now. There's no excuse for this. If you're Russia, you tell Israel, look, no more actions in in Syria. We've stabilized the situation as much as we can. Um, you know, your terrorist allies have failed. And don't take my word for that. There were so many uh, important Israeli military figures and, and, and members of their government who actually said they would have preferred a Salafi terrorist state like ISIS in charge of Israel over the Assad government. And for any Muslim who stumbles upon my page, let that sink in, especially you Salafis and um, you, you fools who actually believe that Iran's the big bad boogeyman. Um, Israel actually prefers, or they would, you know, and and actually, when ISIS uh, did launch an attack, it was either ISIS or Al Nusra. When they uh, accidentally attacked Israeli uh, positions, they apologized, and the Israelis accepted it. So, what what is it? What 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 does all this indicate? 
for any anyone with with two brain cells to rub together it should show you that the last holdouts in the world against total world government and total world hegemony um, for Israel are Iran and its allies if you can't gather that from these um, current events I don't there's just no convincing you uh, Putin is actually is, is a puppet it, it, you know he's he's dialing he's dialing back the statements that the Russians initially made and excusing Israel saying well it's a case of friendly fire and um, another thing as I stated um, on this channel many times is that when the Syrian government especially when the Russians first got involved in the Syrian government wanted to keep up constant pressure on the terrorist on the on the international Salafi slash Wahhabi jihadist the Russians would always slow things down and say well let's let's negotiate let's have these Astana talks uh, yeah let's talk in Kazakhstan let's talk in you know you you know they're going to all these places having all these talks with people who are religious fanatics who obviously don't want any sort of peace and who are actually working on behalf of Saudi Arabia who doesn't want any peace uh, in Syria and who was actually an ally of Israel and it, it's 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 just it's disgusting that that Russia and 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 a lot of people will say well Russia has to be careful they don't want to start World War three over this and well that's what your opponents are doing every time we turn around and, and another good example of this is this whole um, deal with Turkey Putin met with Erdogan a, a couple of days ago and decided that um, they would end the offensive on Idlib like the Idlib won't be liberated now they'll leave it in the hands of Salafi terrorists but the um, agreement says well there, there has to be a 20 kilometer um, demilitarized zone so that's for for those who aren't familiar with a uh, with a demilitarized zone it's like a situation between North Korea and South Korea there's a zone that um, you know up until a point there's no equipment either side could put equipment or personnel in this uh, region so they're gonna allow a and, 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 and to be truthful it's all that all that is gonna be is another terrorist proxy that could be used to bully or um, sabotage and undermine Syria just like the um, Kurdistan that they're working on in northeastern Syria where the so-called Syrian Democratic Forces control territory. That territory, now that the United States and now that Trump um, reneged on his election promises to you simpletons, and I'm not talking about my audience, uh, my audience uh, very astute, very aware, and um, I tend to get a lot of um, intelligent commentary in my comment section uh, most of the time. And, um, you know this this is going to be a terrorist uh it's going to be a actually I'm take that back the uh, SDF is going to be a rump state uh designed for for another state designed for sabotage because what that what that will allow is Israeli uh aircraft a place to refuel and to uh plan missions so they could strike uh Iran because one of the benefits Iran had that none of the Arabs in that region had is that the fact that it's so far away Israel could never just, um, you know, uh, you know, do on on one single trip. They can't go from Israel to Iran, bomb everything, and then take off and head back. They would run out of fuel before then. So they've always been trying to ask the uh, government of Azerbaijan to allow them to attack Iran, which uh, intelligently they don't allow. But um, they've been wanting. Uh, some sort of Kurdistan for that purpose or to uh, infiltrate and, and uh, create uh, problems and to send uh, hit squads and uh, Mossad uh, assets so they could do things like when they killed those Iranian nuclear scientists but the region is being balkanized and Russia's uh, acquiescing to it Syria's not probably not going to get all of its territory back and let's do the math we have four different Syria's now or parts of Syria being carved out along the um, Odin Yanun plan or the Greater Israel project where he wanted he actually said that we need to essentially here's a here's a good paraphrase he said that the neighboring states need to be broken into smaller micro states 
that are perpetually at odds and at war with each other. So no major resistance or coordinated effort could be made uh, to um, prevent Israel from having total dominance. And that's what we're seeing because there's four, four Syrias now. There's the real Syria uh, under the government of Bashar al-Assad and his allies that uh, paid the most in blood and treasure uh, to liberate the parts of Syria that have been li liberated from the terrorists. But you also have the SDF, uh, Kurdistan. Now you have a terrorist, a solid, an international, because there, there are people from all over the world in Idlib. They're African-American uh, losers. And I can say that because um, that's my ethnicity. So, uh, you know, I have some of my fellow countrymen over there uh, you know, oppressing people that uh, we, we should know better. Afro-Americans should know better than to support any sort of uh, oppression, theft, or um, that sort of thing. You know, we should never be a party to that. But unfortunately, we have our sellouts and uh, collaborators um, like like most other people. But there, there are terrorists. There's Uyghurs. There's um, Chechens. You name it. There are terrorists from all over the world in Idlib. So now we have either, it's either going to be a total Turkish vassal. I wouldn't be surprised if, if decades from now Turkey actually annexes it. Because what Erdogan promised was to take all the heavy weapons and to calm the terrorists down. Into, but but there, there's no way they could achieve this. Um, at, at best, al-Nusra, al which is a Harat Tahrir al-Sham now, they'll just go to being what they were before when they were al-Qaeda. It'll be a well-organized terrorist organization that knows how to infiltrate, how to uh, commit acts of terrorism in other people's territory. So you have that that terrorist proxy vassal. You have another um, uh, United States um, territory uh, slash vassal state in the SDF, and 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 an additional Salafi Wahhabi jihadist uh, enclave near Al Tanf in Syria and, and, and the United States kept that territory because that actually has a highway that links Damascus to Baghdad to Tehran so this is all part of great of Israel and, and, and but uh, fortunately uh, the Syrians also have some border territory with Iraq but they'll have to build new infrastructure that'll link Damascus to Baghdad um, and, and Tehran uh, or better infrastructure I'm pretty sure they already can link up but it's looking it's not looking good for people who actually do want balance who do want peace in the world and who want to say let's stop with the madness because all these efforts that Russia's pretending to, pretending and Putin's pretending to do to calm the situation down is actually making it worse because Idlib was supposed to end the conflict and to have things de-escalate and um, to have Syria back uh, just focusing on rebuilding and taking in some of the refugees who left. That's not going to happen anymore, um, you know, especially with uh, Israel doing uh, over 200 uh, air raids. And apparently Russian lives, you know, the, the Turks actually killed Russians earlier on when they, they downed the one Russian aircraft that they said crossed into their territory for 23 seconds. And... Um, you know, Russia's really taking a lot on the chin. Uh, and, and, you know, the reason should be obvious now. They, they you know, Russia could do whatever. It, if, if Russia was a legitimate um, power that wasn't under the thumb of the same uh, Jewish mafia, they would tell Israel, look, hands off. That's it. The jig is up. Stop bombing. Stop your raids. Stop supporting the terrorists or we'll take action against you. And, and yeah, oh yeah, Israel has nuclear weapons. Russia has enough nuclear weapons to turn the entirety of Israel into radiated glass. They, Russia has thousands of nukes compared to Israel's hundreds. And Russia has the means to massively strike Israel before it could even retaliate and, and possibly uh, stop Israel from retaliating. Because the Germans, um, who've actually been totally cuckled by Israel... Uh, actually gave them dolphin class subs that are nuclear capable but it's not looking good for the good guys we we're going to get this um a uh, one world uh bank for international settlement uh government by hook or by crook and what they're going to do is fool a, a lot of you lemmings and simpletons into um the, like these uh patriotic people 
like uh, people like the X-22 report who's who's saying uh, Trump wants to do a deal with Iran, but they're not talking. And these idiots who actually believe that um, Trump is anything more than a puppet. But I'm up on my time limit. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.